Today is another cold, windy February day, so I thought I'd come out here and try and putz in the garage. I kind of messed up my back, you know, with this over five months of having a catheter. I've been pretty inactive and just been getting fat. And uh, anyway, I we had that snow and I went out to shovel where the plow had plowed in the bottom of the driveway. And yeah, the, my flabby back muscles been hurting for a few days so I haven't done anything on this uh, motor haven't even done a thing so anyway today it's feeling better and a little bit better so I thought I'd come out here and uh, fool with this I just turned the heat up that's why you just heard the furnace kick on but um, I'm gonna start tearing into this you can see I got my bench camera mounted up and uh, I found a gasket complete gasket set for this engine in my parts hoard and I found I think an overhaul kit for one of these I don't know if it's for this carburetor or not it's still down in the basement and I'm not going down to get it right now but I'll take the carburetor off and then it will be easier to compare the pieces and with it bolted on the motor so I'm gonna take the tag off take the gas tank and carburetor start taking things apart so I can clean this thing up in the parts washer and I'm kind of I don't really want to spray bomb paint it because gas takes uh, the paint off it's got a little dent there in the tank I'm gonna have to push out too but um, I don't really want to spend the money on having paint mixed for it so I'm gonna see what I have around here as far as paints maybe I can mix up some colors and come up with something similar to this I I have quite a few colors from quite a few cars in the past and I don't know we'll just see if I can't come up with something then maybe I'll rattle can it or something because I probably won't run it much it's gonna be more uh, you know what am I gonna you know just sit there and look at a engine run powering nothing you know that's kind of pointless so I'd either have to make something to for it to power or just not use it and uh, I don't know what I'd make to power you know I could put a pulley on there and run something off of it but anyway first priority is get this thing cleaned up I think I'm going to take this off put it in the parts washer with power tune to start cleaning that out and get all these brackets tank carburetor stuff like that off the tag here so it doesn't get you know it's got a little bit of damage but try and keep it as nice as we can get the housing off you know just start get the flywheel and ignition I don't want to get cleaning solvent on the these old coils aren't friendly with cleaning solvent so I don't want to get that on one of these old coils so anyway let me uh, get my bench cam going here and we'll start uh, seeing what that shows and disassembling this little motor and I'm using this tripod was my dad's and when I cleaned out his house I decided to uh, keep it for the garage it's a custom elevator tripod it says uh, pho photographic research I can't read that the light and the print is small organization New York PRO anyway yeah it's a nice tripod it's got another it's really tall and this thing it's just a really nice tripod I really like it and uh, so anyway that's between the tripod and that we'll try and uh, get because this video camera doesn't have image stabilization the one I'm using now does and uh, you know it'd be all shaky if I didn't use this on a tripod like molar videos were real shaky because this is what I used all the time well I think I'm gonna drain the oil out of it because I want to tip it up you know so I can get these screws and stuff out here get all this assembly off and I don't want oil dumping out on me, so I'll get this thing turned around and hanging over the bench and get the oil. I'll try and uh, video getting this all apart, but I want to get the gas tank and this cover off. And it's just go, there's one screw missing that holds the oops, holds the gas tank on, and uh, it's all bolted to this bracket for the belt so I have to save that and put that back on 
I think it's supposed to be bolted to the other. Well, maybe not. I was going to say, I think it's supposed, because the cover is supposed to go over the belt. So screw in a nut. And there's a bolt at the manifold, but I think this, I have a service manual for one of these engines somewhere around here. Now I'll have to dig it out because I'll need it for the torque specs. But I think this mounts on the other side of this bracket here because there's a cover that goes over that. And I don't know if the cover would go over that or not with that on this side. And it would clearly fit on the other side. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. But anyway, there's a bolt on the intake manifold here. Remote for my radio handy so I can mute it when I start the camera so I don't get a copyright. And I keep it in this baggie to keep it clean. I think that that would go on this side, but I'm not sure. We'll see when we put it together. And I've put a new piece of rubber hose in there so that it seals on the intake, which the screen is totally missing. Yeah, there, there should be a filter screen. You can see part of it there, but yeah, that's... May have to see, I don't know if these are even available, but I'll probably have to replace the packing and make a little handle for that. And uh, anyway, we're close to, let me get that air cleaner off and let me get that in the parts washer with some power tune on it. Easy enough to come off. Get the, one more bolt out of the carburetor here and it should come off the block. Might put these bolts for the carburetor back in the holes so they get cleaned up while I'm cleaning the, the block. And we'll take note the governor was in that hole. So when I go to put it back together and I don't remember, I can review the video, but I might look in the shop manual too. Actually, this carburetor looks halfway decent. The kit I have, if it's the right one, comes with this. Comes with the pin. Yeah, I don't know. It has a different style of gasket for around here. That looks like your typical Tecumseh O-ring. But that pin's knocked out so you can get the main jet out. There's a jet down in there. So that'll have to go in the parts washer. And I'm going to try and save the gaskets if I can. I do have a gasket set, but if I can avoid using it. Wonderful. Might need a bigger screwdriver tip. Yep. See if I have one here that's a little fatter that'll fit that. If not, I can go dig some other ones out. These little ratcheting screwdrivers work really good for doing stuff like this. Got this at um, the auto parts I go to. I think it's AutoZone. I was getting stuff for the Catalina. The 60 Catalina, if you've been a long time viewer, you'll remember that car. I was in there buying parts for it one day and saw this and thought, well, I can definitely put that to use. So I, it wasn't that expensive, a few dollars. But it sure makes getting Phillips screws out easy when they're stuck in. All this stuff needs to go scrape. I'm going to scrape it off before I put it in the parts washer, take a putty knife to it. Try and keep the parts washer fluid a little cleaner. Yeah, that's pretty pretty hideous. And then I got to take that 
nasty muffler off and straighten that. Look at this is the little that's the little breather I was talking about. That, um, it's a crankcase breather. Usually they just pull straight out. But I, I, if I don't need to take it out, I won't. Um, but the next thing is the muffler, and I'll take a... It's got like a locking ring around it. So let me get something. We'll get. I forgot to turn the camera on, but... Yeah, it's hammered loose now. Now if I can get the muffler to turn, I don't want to have to heat the port. Whoops, sorry, I'm knocking you silly there. I guess you're still in view. There we go. You see the little baffle holes there. These are really quiet mufflers. I mean, they're, and there you can see the little locking ring that I hammered loose. Once you get those loose, and I had to hammer all the way through just about right there. But that's no big deal. These are the same. You can buy these at Home Depot in the plumbing section. They're half inch pipe thread. I thought, why do another thing? I take the that thing out of the carburetor and start soaking stuff but it's seized in there so I'm gonna start soaking it with a little penetrant. This is the penetrant I'm gonna use. And it, I find it works pretty good. I mean you know it's penetrant it, there's like croil is better but this is probably as close to it as you can get. This is better than PB Blaster some of the other ones I use. So anyway I'm just gonna I'll soak that, let that soak for a couple of days. In the meantime, I'm going to get the flywheel and, you know, get as much apart here and cleaned up as I can. Now, I've already had this off once, as you saw. When I first got it going, I pulled it off. I don't remember why, but oh, to knock that dent out. Um, but, yeah, so it's... This motor won't take very long to get apart. Take longer to clean it than disassemble it. And I'm going to fix the blower housing here and here too. And I think that, I think there was a, I don't know if I could find one with, with the recoil or the proper parts. Some of them, some of them just had like a debris thing there, even though they're rope start. So this might not have had a recoil. Might have been rope start. Now you can clearly see the. Let me see if I can get the camera close. You can clearly see the crank and the. These two shafts turn different directions. Does that. Let me see if I can get the camera over here. Does it show up? I don't know if it does or not. There's the key. I can't tell on this little screen if it does or not. I had to hunt around to find my remote, but I think these. Engines, as I remember, have left-hand threads on the crank, so I'm going to give it a couple gentle taps here, and we'll get the flywheel off. It wasn't even really that tight. A couple of washers, the cup, and the bolt and yes it is left hand thread and I don't, it looks like I may have to um, use a puller on this because that's got looks rusty in there so maybe I'll get my little puller out and give it a pull. I'm going to run a tap through these. These holes are threaded but yeah they're pretty rough. Give it a little bit of lube in them. And maybe I'll get the tap handle. It might make it a little easier.
You can hear the CD changer changing there, maybe. Need to hang this off the end of the bench a little to get the other holes. beginning to think maybe these holes weren't tapped. They are now. All right, that puts threads in the flywheel that are usable, hopefully. Hopefully we can get the flywheel off. I'll blow those out with a little compressed air. I left my air valve turned on. The air compressor completely drained. It's been a while since I've used it, so maybe a couple weeks. So I'll have to wait for it to pump out. The flywheel popped off. I was tight. I ran this down tight against the crank, and then I was snugging those up with my ratchet, and the flywheel popped. And I hadn't started the video yet because I was going to wait until I was ready to start wrenching on that. But anyway, you can see that looks pretty much all original, and it looks like it's in magnificent shape. So let me, uh, point gap looks good. The points actually, points are in nice shape. A little, eh, not really any, I mean, the points are really amazingly nice. Long time ago, I was at a car cruise, and this guy had this old kid's tricycle. You know, it wasn't a tiny one. It was one to where he could fit on it as an adult. I'm going to keep my eye out for one in a state sale, but he, uh, used a Rio engine and made it a gas-powered tricycle. It was super cool. He would ride it in the car cruises. And uh, I was thinking maybe that would be kind of a fun thing to make something like that with this engine. So that is a possibility I might do. And I think I'll save this handlebar thing right here just in case if I want to use it. If I do use the engine for that and I want to somehow mount it mount something or do something with it there I can but um anyway if you just thought I would yap about what I might do with this motor why I'm popping the head off here I'd have to you know make a he still had the original tricycle wheels he made like a straight shaft and then it had a pulley on the engine that went down to a the clutch mechanism on the shaft so anyway yeah it's let's see if we can run the piston down look at that tiny little piston a little bit of carbon there let me get my stroboscope it really is just a very minor ring ridge there now you can see some wear on the piston because you can see some rings in there but overall the bore doesn't look bad at all. There's some minor, very minor scoring right up in there. Does it show up in there? Maybe without the light or with? You can see the piston movement maybe. So it's got a little wear. We'll see how this thing, I can see the ring end gap. It looks like maybe about five to eight thousandths. Actually, no, that's not the ringing end gap. That's dirt. So I don't know. We'll see the, this, if this motor is shot or not. If, it, if it's going to smoke like crazy. We'll find out when we pull a piston and look at the, the uh, rings at their condition. I don't know if I can find rings or not for this 
I don't think I have any rings. I could probably measure the bore and the... I put the flywheel and the parts washer dog on it. Where's the... Valve guides have a little wear in them. I mean, you know, it's old motor. It's a 1954. Yeah, that's it's probably going to use oil. Put this back on. I, whoops, I got to remember that's left hand thread, so it's the opposite of what it normally is. Let me, uh, there, now you can see the movement there. So, yeah, this thing's got some, some wear, but we'll look it over. I want to save the head gasket because if I can reuse stuff, I will. I'd rather save, you know, my gasket set for a good motor than a worn out one if this thing's worn out. Well, I knocked the key out of the key slot and I loosened these screws up. Get the camshaft out. Want to kind of make sure the. Want to try and keep from destroying the gasket. Oops, sorry, I'm bashing the camera tripod again. Yeah, there's a little bit of sludge in there. It could use more oil changes. The bushing doesn't look too bad. Yeah, the PTO bushing's in nice shape. These engines are, what's nice about these engines is you can put new bushings in them and, or bearings or whatever you want to call them. And uh, just the, make sure the timing marks are all legible before I take the cam out. Okay, I can see the mark on the crank and I can See the mark on the cam. Cam mark is right there. Crank mark is right there. They line up nicely. See how it only has, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it has one lobe that works both valves. All right, let me line the marks up and we'll pop the cam out and you can see. There's camshaft. Not much to it, is there? And then these are little, little, uh, the little doohickeys that ride on the cam that work the, the valves. And then there's another bushing right there. And then I'll take this, uh, now it's working as a piston, obviously. But I'll get that gear off and we'll, it's coming apart quick. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll probably leave these little things in. There's no, it's not necessary to take them out. I can get the valves without, I can push these springs up and then pull a little pin out. Like a lot of Briggs and Strattons are the same way and then the valve pops out. But I'm just going to leave these in the, in the motor. No point in taking them out. Clean it up with them in there. Let me get this off and, uh. I don't remember if that's a right or a left thread there, so we're going to have to be just gentle with it and see. I don't know if I can hold the... Oops, I just unthreaded the thing on the crank. Alright, let me uh, fiddle out around with what I'm going to use to hold that without damaging it. This just unscrewed right hand thread. There's two washers on there, so I'm going to make note of that in the 
video so when I go to put it together actually there are two washers that are like one I can't separate them but anyway that's the bolt timing gear and another key so now I can uh, get this other cover off and we can get the piston and the crank out and I'll take the valves out and the rest of the sheet metal we can clean it up and like I say I get up get up to it I'll try and get to bearing surfaces and see if I can get new oil seals for it too. I don't know if you notice this or not but this engine you can change the timing you can loosen these screws and you can move this breaker plate and I'll set that per shop manual or service manual when I dig it out I'll, I know I have a manual for one of these engines and uh, I'll set everything up the way it's supposed to be but I want to take this off so I don't damage any of this and I want to mark it other than with a magic marker so I know where the timing goes so I think I'm going to just kind of eyeball the center of these screws and just put a little line and that'll be my timing mark. And then I might put a mark like there and down on this aluminum maybe right here. And that way I can that way I can see that after I take everything apart and clean it. It will uh, still show up. And, you know, if the manual doesn't show the proper way to time it. I turned the radio down. I didn't turn it off. Hopefully it doesn't mute it. I mean, hopefully it doesn't uh, get a copyright. I'm listening to my CD changer. There's the breaker plate and the coil. I got to mute that out. I'm going to get a copyright. There's the Wico number. It looks like it's X9055. And there's a number right here that says uh, FW2318 and then it says right here set points point zero two zero. It's all a nice shape. You can kind of see where the screws were so I can probably get the timing back pretty good but I just wanted to make sure I didn't tell it. Whoops, those screws just fell out. I want to keep them in there. I should probably put that in a bag or something so it doesn't get damaged. All right, I got to get this off. Get the cam lobe and the key slot out, or the, the key for that, and then I can uh, take this off. I'll take the base off and undo the connecting rod and pop the piston first, but I might as well get that off if I can. And this has only goes you gotta make sure you put it on the right way. See how it has an arrow. I don't know if that shows up or not, but it says uh, 6 9. Wait, that's upside down. 7 4 6 9. Little number on it. And let me get the little key out of there. Put it in with that. Alright, now I'm gonna undo the, the base and the connecting rod so I can uh, get the get the crankshaft out. Let me get the cylinder head. I scraped some of the carbon off of it. It really wasn't too bad, but I'm going to throw this in the parts washer right now too. 
This is the wrench I bought in the estate sale. I bought this uh, motor and I got these bolts. I had to break them loose and now I'm just, it's hard to get a box end in here so I'm using an open end to take them out. But I did use a box that I tapped on with a hammer to get around all the dirt to, like I say, break them loose. So we'll get these sump bolts out and Take a look inside the crankcase. I guess I could turn you off while I'm doing this, save just watching me turn bolts. I don't see a mark on the piston that shows top, but maybe there's something obvious on the connecting rod. But I got the uh, crankcase unbolted, so now let me try and separate it without... I don't want to damage the, the aluminum casting, so I'm going to get a mallet and gently tap it with my maybe my putty knife in between there or something I don't know we'll we'll tap it with something oh okay then we didn't ruin the gasket oh there is crud in the bottom of the sump But that's no big deal. We can clean that out. It's almost like grease. It's so tarry. There's the inside of the little little motor here. I'll straighten up those. There's two little ears on the connecting rod that need to be straightened, and then I can unbolt the rod and push the piston out. But I need to mark the piston. I'll take my little uh, scriber and make an arrow pointing up on it so I know which way that piston goes in when it's, you know, as I'm going to clean it all up. So I don't want to take a magic marker mark or something like that off of it. So let me, uh, let me do that. Put a scribe mark on the top of the piston there. And now I'm going to undo the rod journal. But first I got to straighten up a couple of uh, tabs that keep the connecting rod from coming loose. Looks like you'd only get this thing bolted in one way anyway, so it's probably a waste of time unless they take the piston off the rod. That's in nice shape. Crank journal's in nice shape. Let's see what the piston looks like. Yeah, that. Whoops, we lost a piece of ring, so it's got a broken ring, and that oil control ring is almost worn down to nothing. Definitely needs rings, but that's probably why I was seeing a big gap. Let me see if I can find that piece of ring. It definitely needs a ring, uh, set of rings. Found that there's two bits of broken ring from this top ring here. Yeah, and that ring is really, really worn. wonder if the groove is worn in the piston. I think it's more the ring's worn than the piston. But the oil control ring is, look at that. Can you see? They must have never cleaned the air filter. 
look at that that should be have that black in there and it should those rings should be above that groove this so the oil gets trapped in between and feeds back in through that groove in the oil control ring so definitely see if I can find a set of rings for this thing somewhere it's not gonna it's it, it's just gonna smoke like it was when I first started it if I don't change those rings so if this engine's going to be of any use other than look pretty definitely gonna have to put rings in it so I'll measure the piston and the grooves maybe I can find some rings from an another engine that will work in it. So let me uh, get this cover off. Find my Phillips screwdriver here. Tried to clean, oh, here it is. Tried to clean up a little bit around here. I loosened these up earlier with my ratcheting screwdriver while I had it out. Surprisingly, this thing had decent compression with those messed up rings. Okay, and those cooling sheet metal things should come off with this too, so. Let's see. Whoops, getting nastiness all over everything. I'll take those cooling things, there's just some screws in there, and then that comes off. And the crank should lift right out. All in all, uh, the wear in the rest of the engine parts is minimal, so I suspect it was just a poorly maintained air cleaner, and those wire mesh air cleaners aren't the best in the world anyway. You gotta in the cooling jacket but anyway you got to um oil them so the, the dirt gets trapped in the mesh if somebody just cleaned it and didn't re-oil the mesh then yeah so all right i'm gonna pop the the valves out last of all and then the motor's all apart i'm gonna try and pull the valves out just with like this That's the exhaust valve, what a cute little thing. Yep, that needs grinding, so we'll give that a grind. I'll show you how I do that when I get to it, because it's just a lawnmower engine. It's <clears throat> no big deal. And I want to set that so I remember that's the exhaust. I think they're different lengths, but I don't remember. It's been a long time since I've worked on one of these little motors. One of these Rios, that is. I don't know if I can push that one up with my... Yeah, I can, but... Um, it might be easy. It's just a little tighter on this side than it was on the other side. There we go. Well... can't get a grip on it with my screwdriver in the way. Oops, and then it fell down. So let me, well, maybe I can push it through. Let me get a little uh, thing. And the intake valve. I'm going to set these on something with a note of which valve is which because I think they're identical. So that one's going to be the intake. I'm going to put a little piece of tape or something on them for now. And that's as far as I'm going to take this motor apart. I'll probably run a little hone through the cylinder and 
The seats look good, but we'll give them a clean up too and uh, clean the motor up. I think this is as far as I'm going to go on this motor today. I think um, tomorrow or the next day when I fill up to it again, I'll start cleaning everything up really, really good. Um, that's the exhaust valve. That's the intake because on the motor sitting, you know, piston facing me, intake exhaust. And I'll do something to mark them, blower housing, and uh, lots of parts in the parts washer. And I sprayed them with this stuff right here. Let it sit overnight and give them a wash with the parts fluid and the brush. It looks like I got one cooling fin to straighten out a little bit there. All the bolts, fasteners, everything's in the sump of the engine and uh, so we'll get everything cleaned up looking pretty and I'll see if I can get a set of rings and we'll do a part two on cleaning and painting and a part three on reassembly of this motor and then hopefully I can find like I say maybe an old kid's tricycle or something you know a decent size one that I can make up put this motor on make up to uh, you know just for something to fun to ride around that, you know, make a little money on, probably sell it eventually. But like I say, I saw one in a cruise. It was up in Romeo at the Peach Festival, and a guy had a real engine and a tricycle. And it's kind of neat when you have these unusual, not everyday seen motors on things. You know, it's, you know, it's kind of like you see small block Chevys or LSs and everything. How many LSs can you look at? You know, you've seen one or two, you've seen hundreds of them, and you know, you see everybody, oh, well, let's you go to a cruise and they open up their hood and there's an LS. Well, it's like seeing a Tecumseh or a Briggs and Stratton on a mini bike or a go-kart, or nowadays a Predator. So this will be kind of a interesting little change. Hopefully it doesn't smoke too bad when we're done. I think that smoke coming out of the muffler was because these rings are so shot in this engine. But anyway, I'll see if I can find a set of rings. If I can't, we'll throw it together and use something else or just do it for show and won't make a, a trike. But just kind of wanted to do a disassembly video. Like I say, I'll do this probably in three or four videos like I did the power brake booster. So anyway, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you like my channel, that 348 engine icon up there will subscribe you. And thank you for watching my videos.